Welcome to the Financial Life Podcast with me, Ben Robel. This is episode 21. Thanks for tuning in. After completing our overview of the four bucket framework for wealth, it makes sense to talk about how to use it. Now, there is no one right way to do this, but there are some ideas or best practices that are worth considering. Number one, the four bucket framework, and in fact, many of the frameworks used by professionals in this world require specific goals. That is, specific goals that can be articulated and calculated. This doesn't require complicated math, and these goals can change over time. But it's important to have a realistic starting point that can be adjusted as you go, rather than one that you have to overhaul because it was incorrect when you started. Number two, the first bucket, the cash bucket, is critically important. We discussed the issue of illiquidity already. It happens to people and companies that can't meet an immediate cash need, like a bill that is larger than anticipated or an unexpected expense. This leads us to two best practices. The first is to prioritize the first bucket with extra money, and the second is to avoid illiquid investments until this account, this bucket, feels like it is at least close to being fully funded. If you have an emergency expense that exhausts your cash account, you can still probably meet it by, quote, getting liquid if you have money in a publicly traded stock, bond, ETF, or mutual fund. But if that money is invested in something like real estate, particularly if you've used debt alongside it, then you cannot sell it quickly and you would have a problem. This is also the place to allocate money to protection, which generally means different types of insurance. In our previous conversation around a budgeting framework, we talked about insurance from the perspective of insuring your assets, your wealth generating assets and your possessions. But in this case, what we're talking about is insurance to protect yourself and to protect your family. While it's true that you may not need these insurance policies, and we all hope that we don't, nobody gets insurance for, for example, their home and then thinks it was a waste of money because the home is still standing without issue 10 years later. The biggest cause of bankruptcy in the United States that is the expense that creates liquidity problems most frequently for people is medical bills. That means health insurance at even a basic level will save you money in the short term and anxiety. Make this investment in yourself. Make this investment in your family. Number three, it is important to avoid being too formulaic in approaching the allocation of money to any of these buckets. Keep in mind that we have not distinguished between the details or accounts that would be in any of these specific buckets. For example, you can have the beginnings of or a consistent investment started in bucket three if you are investing in a 401k at work. At the same time, you might not have enough money to make other investments. Now, the money in your 401k is generally not available to you for taxable purposes without penalty, although there are some exceptions. But it is part of your investment strategy and allocation. Every choice we make, every choice that you make, is unique to your individual circumstance. Number four, the two fundamental buckets in this framework are the cash bucket and the investment bucket. The cash plus bucket, bucket number two, may not be useful throughout your life. There may be times when you do not have any intermediate goals that you need to fund. On the other hand, you might never fund the legacy bucket, bucket number four. This may be because you need all of the money that you make or because you choose to simplify your life with less structure. And number five, the composition and size of the cash and cash plus buckets, buckets one and two, will change as the world around you changes. If you develop a medical condition, or if you are worried about losing your job, for example, you might increase the amount of money in your cash bucket. If you have an intermediate goal and extra money becomes available to invest for it, you'll need to consider interest rates and the investment options available that will meet your needs. But on the other hand, if you create a good projection using reasonable assumptions 
and you have realistic long-term goals at the point in your life when you create it, the allocation of your investment bucket won't change much. More on that in a later episode. Now, it will shift on the margin, and the tools you use to express the strategy may change. But generally speaking, the long-term allocation will remain mostly constant unless you have a significant change in your circumstance. One of the worst mistakes I saw professional advisors make was to change the long-term allocation for clients to pursue higher returns. More on that in a later episode as well. We're heading into the end of 2023, so it's a good time to start planning for the upcoming year, but also for the larger future that we face. This framework is one of many, but I prefer it because it is easy to explain, easy to execute, and easy to understand. Thanks for listening. I hope this is helpful context for you and your financial life.